Hey everybody, Sean and Carmel here. We are at Disneyland, precisely right now we're in DCA actually. We're gonna try some of the food and talk more about that. Carmel did a video yesterday on some of the food and wine treats and we'll do a few more of those. Um, but really the two big things today are obviously food and wine, but even bigger than that is Magic Happens. Um, you were here yesterday able to see it for kind of a preview that started at one o'clock. I got to see it today. Um, people, it was the most packed. I mean, we got here uh, on the later side just in general. I mean, we got you got there because I dropped you off. You got here maybe, what, 40 minutes early for the parade, somewhere in that vicinity, and you said it was just wall-to-wall. -wall. Yeah, I mean, it's no surprise. I mean, obviously, people are excited for a brand-new parade, but, yeah, I mean, I went all the way up to It's a Small World trying to find a spot where I would be kind of in the front because I'm super short, and so height is yeah, an issue for me. And so I went all the way to Small World, and I couldn't find anything. I walked all the way back, and I couldn't find anything. Um, really the only place that I found any space, it wasn't even in the front, was over by the fire station. Um, but and we were like 15 people back there or something. Yeah, we were nowhere <laughs> Which near is the fine. front. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we didn't put in the time that no. other people did and stuff, but people are definitely excited. But like through the hub area, I mean, it was just stacks and stack of pe stacks of people. I mean, I've never seen the crowds like that. Um, for any of the parades in the past, but again, this is a brand new one, so it makes sense. Yeah. Um, so it's not surprising, but it was a lot of people. And so. just sharing that just to plan accordingly, particularly if you're coming out this weekend, but I think just for the weeks ahead, it's going to be pretty crazy uh, with people there, and there's going to be crazy over here in DCA with Food and Wine Festival. It is like packed wall to wall of humanity. So busy times ahead. I think uh, that's kind of the goal for Disneyland this year is to be more crowded than ever. <laughs> Um, after last year, some things in, in, you know, Forbes and stuff like that about people not coming out for Galaxy's Edge. I think the plan this year with the three-day ticket price and all these other things that they're doing to try and really get the parks packed. So with that said, though, magic happens. Let's go ahead and show you just a few little snippets of it here, and then uh, we'll talk about a couple things, and then we'll get back to the food.
so we as well as you know tons of people have full video up on the YouTube channel if you're interested in seeing all of it but just got a couple snippets of it there um, I don't know you've seen it now twice so general thoughts after two shots at it okay, well first of all yesterday when I saw it I was recording it and so it was hard for me to kind of take it in so today I was just watching I wasn't doing anything with my phone really so I was able to take it in a bit more uh, now that being said I liked it it's it's enjoyable um, the song isn't super catchy to me like even after the second viewing I like the song is not coming to my head right now so that's a little off for me and then um, some of the costumes like in particular the first group of costumes that come out it, I guess it's a magical theme costume so they're kind of odd and so but they're kind of cool at the same time but in a way they they almost to me when I first saw it yesterday I thought more that it felt like what in the 80s we thought the future would look like so it would seem more futuristic but well, then a funny thing on that when I saw it right now um, the people next to us uh, said here comes Geppetto and so obviously um, I, and I guess it was the one with the, the white wig the big white hair but it was just funny because they weren't that far off from us and the fact that they thought it was Geppetto so maybe that first group is, is not connect for everyone I thought I mean it to me it's dreamlike and it, it was fine to me but I just thought it was a funny comment like it was the very first thing I heard somebody say about the parade in person because I saw a lot of stuff online yesterday but just in person I was like oh there's Geppetto and they weren't being funny at all and they were just like super excited that Geppetto was in it. and then as it got closer and they saw like oh I don't know if that's Geppetto I heard that comment and it didn't even occur to me because of where we were standing I couldn't even see what they were seeing so I had no idea what they were even referring to but I mean the floats themselves are really cool the characters are really cool uh, some of the costumes are really impressive uh, Maui I thought looked a little odd <laughs> yeah Maui looks like I mean well what he is he's a big kind of inflatable a person inside of a kind of an inflatable which looks exactly like what I thought they would do with Thanos if they ever put him in the Frightfully Fun Parade which I just tweeted that a little bit ago but I've always said uh, that would be a cool kind of Halloween thing is to put Thanos in you know they obviously have the Marvel push and that's kind of what I figured that it wouldn't look amazing um, but it would be you know interesting but what um, so what was a favorite what maybe is a favorite float or a favorite piece of it partial to Coco for myself right now. I kind of enjoy the music and um, I thought the the character uh, playing Miguel or I, I don't remember now if it, it was, I think it's a costume person or is yeah, it, it is. A, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking for a second that maybe it was a puppet but then I no. couldn't figure out where they would be puppeting from or puppeteering no. from. Um, so I thought he was cool. I love the bridge that goes from the living to the, to the yeah. afterlife world and I like Dante being represented on there and then I thought the back of the float was really interesting with the different skulls, the skulls and, yeah. and the kind of the city, city scene and stuff yeah. I think that's probably yeah. my favorite as far as the individual costume I did kind of like the um, Sleeping Beauty dress because it kind Aurora. of Aurora because yeah. it does kind of the purple blue or not purple the pink and blue switch off color thing which is kind of a cool thing that seemed to be like maybe the biggest deal that I saw of people because I wasn't able to be here yesterday. So I was watching things from afar. I was watching your video. I was watching people react to social media that you put up. And um, Aurora, there were so many like retweets coming in that were like Aurora exclamation points. I love the dress exclamation points. And like that seemed to be the thing, at least on our stuff, that got the, the most traction. Um, I did want to say on the on the music because I feel like what I saw and again this is all anecdotal but was like 75% of the people loving the music and like 25% like hating the music and I didn't see anybody in between and I feel like a lot of times with things I'm the person that's kind of like eh, it's fine it's not you know and that's kind of where I was like I, I have no doubt and that's one of the things when I see something like this I think like wow we're going to hear this song for like the next 10 years or 7 years it's going to be a long time and over that time, we are going to, uh, I'm sure, really grow to like it. But it didn't, like, grab me in, like, a profound way of, like, oh, I need to hear it all the time. But I did think it was um, quite cool overall. I think with you, Coco was maybe my favorite float. Although the whole Moana section, which I thought it was interesting that Moana got such a big part. Because you have Moana and the waves, the water, and then you've got the dancers, and then you've got Maui coming. I thought that's kind of interesting just that she has such a huge part of the parade. But, uh... I think it's going to be incredibly popular. I mean, so many people, I saw very little 
I saw almost no overall negatives online yesterday. Not that I combed every single tweet or whatever, but I think that for the most part, people really like it. And uh, we'll see this weekend as everybody gets to see it. Yeah, I think I saw a few comments of people being surprised the sword in the stone was represented uh, in there because it doesn't really fit with the other newer characters and stuff. I think it's the but, magic, yeah. But it is yeah. totally... It, magic happens and he pulls out the sword and stuff so I totally fits in that way but I think that some people were surprised that that was represented in the um, in the parade when they're obviously when it's more like Moana and Frozen and Coco and stuff that were kind of the big ones so so, all right. So, I mean, I think we like it. I mean, we've said on the podcast lots of times that for neither of us are like parades, the biggest things. We're not people that line up every time for a parade. But I must say, since we started covering them the last few years, I've grown to like them a lot more, which is interesting. I guess it's one of the things you have to give it a try. But, you know, it really, since Parks and Cons was created and we've done so many of these parades, and I'm like, oh, I kind of like this. And then I started wanting to like stop and see them. And that was always a huge thing growing up. My mom was always super into them and stuff. And I always remember feeling like it was a drag. It's like, I want to go on the rides. She's like, oh, we got to sit here for two hours waiting for the parade. But now as an adult, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Let's sit and wait for the parade. So, um, but yeah, plan accordingly. As I said, it's going to be super crowded, super busy for a while. And so in that same vein, super crowded, super busy, and a narrower walkway than ever, uh, DCA with the Food and Wine Festival. So Food and Wine Festival is back again this year. Now you did a separate video just kind of trying some of the food and, and talking a little bit about the event and things like that. But we'll, we'll not go over all of those things again because we have all different foods here to try and stuff but it does run uh, officially today February 28th although it was open for you uh, yesterday and what does it run till there April 21st April 21st it's a little passport so really quick this book is great for uh, descriptions of the food so you can kind of get a better feel for it and then just really quick the tasting cards are available for $51 of your pass holder and you get a AP magic uh, magnet and then $56 if you're not a pass holder and these are yeah, a lot of the booths, right? Or no? Where did you get this at? Just uh, to... I got it at the booth where I actually picked up the um, Taste where I purchased the, the sip and savor pass. Um, I find I've noticed in the past years that they start to run out of these, so then you actually have to ask for them at times. But I think right now they're in a few different locations that so you can just pick them up. And this came with eight cards, eight, right? Uh, tastings. Yeah. Yes. So she was out here yesterday with my mom, and they tried different things, and then. We trying, uh, we're trying a few new things now. Now, we're not going to get into all that, but to know, and I think in the past, one of my favorite things about food and wine is just the extra entertainment. So, like, behind us, uh, Jam and Chefs, or behind Carmel, these Jam and Chefs were just performing. So, you have some character interactions there. It's a fun stuff. I mean, it's a kid-based show, but it's still fun. I think Fat Cat Swingers are on stage now over there. So, there's a lot of uh, fun entertainment, a lot of energy. That said, definitely pack your patience because it is crowded and busy. And I think this is... This is opening day officially, and it's already, I think, looking like it's going to be the worst in terms of crowds just because not only is it a popular event now, not only does it draw in, I would say, a lot more adults than kids, so it's just larger people. Like, just it's more adults than kids, just is what it is. But also, the Avengers campus, the Marvel walls, have extended further into the walkway, so it's kind of interesting. Like, just before the booths started opening up, that wall kind of came out even more, so it is like a narrow, relative to big theme park, you know, walkway areas it's pretty narrow so I would imagine like tomorrow is going to be absolutely insane because as we were walking through it was like whatever 4 35 o'clock and it's already a lot of people aren't even here from work yet on a Friday so big crowds pack your patience and uh, pack your appetite obviously though as well so want to pick one of these things that you I don't even know the name of any of these like I picked a couple of them out but what are they what do we got well, using the passport, I can describe it to you. So at the uh, Nuts About Cheese booth, there's the Impossible Cheeseburger Mac and Cheese, which is uh, described as being with impossible meat made from plants topped with special burger sauce. Special burger sauce. That is. So this is, uh, so this is vegan then? I don't, or they're vegetarian? It's listed as vegetarian. There aren't any vegan things listed. It's, I mean, it shows, it marks off gluten-friendly, kid-friendly, plant-based, and vegetarian, but it doesn't specify vegan so and i've always been kind of back and forth on impossible myself like sometimes i've really loved it like there was that shepherd's pie or whatever uh during the christmas time that i like i thought it was fantastic um and then like last year at this event uh, go ahead and try yeah the slider was like eh, not as much my thing so 
that's interesting. That's not what I expected at all. <laughs> it tastes like to me. To me, you tell me what you think. Macaroni and cheese with Thousand Island in it. Is that seem correct? That's like, what I was there does thinking. seem to be like I don't know if that picks up at all, but there's like a Thousand Island kind of a pinkish color to the sauce. It's crunchy. I mean, it really honestly it just tastes like like macaroni and cheese with Thousand Island mixed in, which is fine, but. I don't know. It's something I would necessarily order again. I like it well enough. Yeah, it's fine. I'm, I'm definitely not a vegetarian, um, and the Impossible Meats it really has to be flavored well for me to really like it. And uh, the bites I had of the Impossible Meat was kind of chewyish. So I don't know. I, it's fine. I like it okay. If you got it, I would probably have a few bites of it, but I probably won't be ordering that on my own. Okay. What's next? So next up. We were at, we went to One in a Melon, and I got kind of adventurous on this because I've not had anything like this before, but it's a pokey style watermelon with cucumber. It's watermelon cubes marinated in citrus soy pokey sauce with on white rice topped with cucumbers and red onions um, with Sure. Not sure what it, that word is, but um, it is a vegetarian option, it says, and gluten free and uh, plant based. So I am not really, in general, a fan of fruit being added into, like, I'm really very one dimensional when it comes to my fruit. Like, I like it more as like a sweet dessert type thing. So, again, I know that's not the, the norm these days, but I, and I'm going to try it, but. of different textures in there there's a crunchiness and then there's the the watermelon juiciness there's a little bit of a kick to it like a little bit of an after spice kind of thing maybe it's these oh. little pepper things on yeah, it i don't think i got any spice in mine it's interesting textures are like crunchiness like there's these crunchy pieces mixed in some zucchini yeah definitely not my type of thing I think it's cucumber not zucchini okay i'm sorry Definitely not my type of thing, but it's fine. I mean, would, so this is more up your alley, whereas that's more of mine. Is this something you would order again, or? I might. It kind of has an interesting combination to it. It's good. Um, now this one, by the way, I did just pay for because it was like six seventy-five or six dollars, and a lot of the items on the tasting card are like eight dollars. So just because I like to um, money conscientious or whatever, so. Yeah, and, and on that note, watch for that because there is an average price, which we didn't do the math this time, but of what like each thing should cost. And some things are below, above that price and some things are below. You paid for the drink as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because the drink was, do you remember the $6. price? $6. So $6. And so, so, yeah. $8 really worth using a tasting uh, tab for. The $6 ones, probably just pay for them. Yeah. Um, okay. And we'll be back lots of time. So I think I actually would, might get this again. It's an interesting combination. It's really interesting. Okay, what's next? Uh, So I got the house-made watermelon agua fresca, which is uh, fresh watermelon, peaches, agave nectar, and fresh lime juice, and it's not alcoholic. And now you said they ran out of ice, right? And so she got ice to add to it. The only reason I bring that up is because I do think your mileage varies a lot of times with the boost from our experiences in the past. Past is sometimes things are much spicier one day and not quite as much the other day, or colder, or they run out of things. So I mean, they do they do a good job of trying to be consistent. But I do think there's a little bit more variation with these um, experiences than there are with the normal Disneyland food. So yeah, usually what do you think? they'll ask you to wait if they're out of something. I like it. It's really good. Um, I'm, I usually have just straight up watermelon uh, agua fresca and so this isn't quite as sweet as that because you can taste the lime in it and you can taste the, the other fruit so I definitely like it and it comes with a little watermelon wedge in it so I love agua generally I, I'm a big fan of fruit so. yeah it, t it tastes just like I mean it tastes like what a like watermelon juice basically it's, it's like a 
yeah, it's, it's good. It tastes like exactly what it looks like. It doesn't have any, these all had kind of a surprise element to me and that's just like, yep, it tastes exactly like what it looks like, so. Cool. Well, and you don't normally drink watermelon alba fresca. It's usually a little sweeter. Okay. The other well, that's um, good. fruits that's what I'm saying kind of tones it down so it's not as sweet as sometimes I've had an alba fresca. But it's so good. You know. I like it. All right. Next up. So next up, uh, we went to Peppers Caliente and we got the creamy poblano pepper pasta, which is rotini pasta with roasted poblano sauce uh, garnished with roasted red pepper drizzle and crumbled uh, cotijas uh, cheese. All right. Be careful, it's quite hot. Really spicy? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, it's not spicy. really spicy, but it's spicy. Knowing that you're not as much into spicy. For us, it's kind of like she's way more into sweet, I'm way more into spicy. I'm so I like it. I think it's a really good spicy, but I think it might be a bit much for you. I'm so. going to be adventurous and just take a full on bite and see what it's like. So hopefully it's not bad. I do like that a lot. That's definitely my favorite thing so far, but it is, it has a little bit of a, a kick to it and it kind of comes towards the end, but it's um, a really soft pasta. It's interesting. It's one of those types of, of foods, I feel like, where it's like, I almost don't taste anything but the texture of the pasta and then this, like, spice. It's kind of like almost a, a tapatio type of a hot to it type of thing, where it's not like, again, it's not too hot, but it's just, it's an interesting kind of flavored hot. I'm obviously able to still speak, and <laughs> so it wasn't too, too hot, but it's definitely warmer than I generally prefer, so... If we got it again, I would probably just eat around the sauce. That time I just took a big bite because I wanted to try it for what it was meant to be. So it was manageable, um, and but it does have a good taste. So if you're at all into spice, if you're really sensitive, don't try it, but it's good. All right, and next then, up, final two. Uh, let's see, that's my place. Uh, we got the uh, smoked bacon barbecue beef loco moco which is tender beef served on rice with smoked bacon barbecue sauce. And this one's supposed to be kid friendly and gluten friendly. So now what we noted is, cause you do not like, you're very tenuous about eggs in general, but particularly you don't like egg crumbs. Yeah, hard boiled and, eggs, I'm not yeah. a fan of. And there are tons and tons of, it's probably more hard boiled eggs on here um, than anything else on here. Now what is the meat? It's a beef tenderloin. Okay. Or tender beef. So the meat is kind of uh, a sauce on top. This meat is kind of. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And this is meat, meat, right? This is not impossible or anything? No, I think it's real meat. It's really interesting. I I don't know. I kind of like it, <laughs> but it's weird. It's got like this barbecue. It, honestly, the barbecue sauce just kind of tastes, or the sauce just kind of tastes like a barbecue sauce from like French Market, like Heinz kind of dipping sauce to me. It's described as smoked bacon barbecue sauce. Yeah, see, I'm not tasting the bacon. I'm not, and maybe it's there, but I, I'm not really tasting it. The rice is good. I like, see, and I like hard boiled eggs quite a bit and the, the little <laughs> green onions and stuff, so. So if we order it, we get it with the eggs on the side next time so that you can have that and I can pick out the rest. But so in that bite, I avoided the egg mostly. That was good. I liked it. it was, um, the beef was good too. I enjoyed it. But again, I'm not a big fan of the egg thing. And then right, the last, last one. thing is the monkey bread, which is fresh bread uh, soaked in butter, cinnamon, and sugar, baked with caramel sauce, and finished with whiskey glaze and candied pecans. So. Yeah, I think this is a good example of one of the things, it's just the sizes have become much more realistic. Where like, when they first started these events, it was, we just didn't even do them for a few years because it was just like, it seemed like such a waste of money. And now it's like, I feel like these two or something would be, like I'd be full, I'd be fine. And then this is a good size dessert. This is what it looks like inside. Wow, I like that a lot. It has a really warm kind of drizzle of 
What is caramel. that? Is caramel? caramel? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm a general fan of monkey bread, and this works for me. Yeah. Really good. This is really, really good. Yeah, I would say that's, to me, the best thing of any of these. Just, I mean, to me. Um, but definitely of the kind of more entree stuff. I, You know, I'd say really honestly, which is rare for me, because I'm pretty limited a lot of times in what I'll try and eat, but I could eat anything here. Like, if that's what we're going to have, that would be my last would, place. Yeah. And I would eat around certain parts of it and stuff, but for the most part, I could eat anything here, which is... Is, it's interesting just over the years I feel like there's more things that have really kind of clicked for me here on their menu so some good stuff good stuff so I've liked all this stuff pretty well I like the stuff I had yesterday so you want to look back on that video to see what it was I tried then but um, yeah I'm, I'm enjoying everything off the tasting card so far that we've tried so. alright so I think we'll probably touch up some more video on some of the food options and maybe some of the entertainment in the weeks ahead. The event does go, as I said, until April 21st, so it's a pretty big uh, window. We also have Boysenberry Festival coming up, so we'll be talking about that food in the near future from Knott's Berry Farm uh, and some other things in that vein. Please subscribe, like, if you like these videos. We never asked for that, and then we realized you're supposed to do that on YouTube, so we'll start doing that on YouTube and asking for that. But hopefully enjoy. We've had more and more people over the years say, oh, we want to know what you think of the foods or think of this or that, and so we're trying to do a little bit more of that with our content as we're going into 2020 here. And, and so do please... turn on your notifications when you subscribe so that you are notified because if you follow us along at all, you know that we're kind of always at different things and we don't have like a set schedule when we release things. So turn on your notifications so you can actually see where we're at and what we're doing. Yep. So with that, we will wrap up here. We're going to get back and finish our food and maybe check out some more entertainment and try to survive the crowd. So until next time, we'll see you in line somewhere.